joining us. What did you think? Well, I thought he had the challenge of saying something different while remaining the same and remaining true to himself. I felt that overall, it was manifestly adequate, blandly yes, predictable. Really? Well, you see, the thing is, his overall micro-message, the legacy that he's meant to leave behind with his audience in the hall and his audience at home, was fairness and a new settlement for new times. It's not the sort of burning, adrenalized words that are going to spark a conversation with my taxi driver on the way home. In general, how do you think David Cameron did? Well, this is something I thought I'd never say about David Cameron, but it was a brilliant piece of speech reading. Because, of course, I wasn't actually sure, first of all, which David Cameron would turn up. You see, we'd seen one tone on day one, the nasty Dave attacking Gordon Brown. Day two, we saw nice Dave offering bipartisan cooperation. And thirdly, today, we saw a rather stilted, ponderous Dave. But, of course, it came across, perhaps, as statesmanlike as well. What struck you, Graham, about yesterday? He had to walk along probably the narrowest piece of tightrope in the history of political public speaking. He had to provide some bright sunshine, but grounded with sharp, solid substance. And although a 15-minute speech can't possibly be all things to all men, in the circumstances, he just about got as close as anyone could have done. And he really came across as a doer and not just a dreamer. Let's bring in Graham Davis. He's uh, well known as a coach of politicians. Well, he has a head start on so many other politicians, because this is a man who, who looks good in a business suit, he looks good in a bathing suit. <laughs> uh, he, he, he clearly spends more time pumping iron than he does writing his speeches. <laughs> and of course, when you've got that sort of head start on everyone else, it means that if you know you look good, you know that you can interact very well in almost any social circumstance. And really, it shows that this is a blanket attack. This is a classic, traditional red-blooded old-style labour budget, just slightly, not exactly soaking the rich, but certainly dampening them quite a lot. The word bonus has become one of the, the new dirty words of the English language, go with subprime and, and Iceland. We normally end with a cheery one, but not tonight. Well, a cheery for some people, though. The economy may be down, banks may be down, accountants may be down, but burglaries and muggings are up, which means good news for criminal lawyers.